Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Plan B Success. We have John Paragon today, all the way from Yorkshire, England. Now, John is someone who believes in hustling. John has a business where he does one-on-one coaching, as well as helps people, entrepreneurs, or wannabe entrepreneurs, launch their businesses. There's a slew of services John provides to Paragon Hustle, and we'll find out all about that from him. Welcome, John. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about uh, yourself, your background. Uh, background, getting into the nitty gritty. Up until about six years ago, I worked, uh, I'd worked my entire working career in a typical nine to five. Although I think actual nine to five hours are rare these days. It's more like 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. for most people. Um, but the last job I had, I worked at a new car dealership. I worked there for a year and workplace politics kind of kicked in and and for a few different reasons i was kind of encouraged to leave Uh, so i stepped out of the typical nine to five and there were a few things happening in my life at the time that kind of forced or influenced me to kind of take control of my own finances my own career my own future and my family i had a new uh a new baby at the time which is my little boy he's now nearly six and my daughter at the time was about five years old So I got a small family to take care of. So I decided to take a little bit more control and I kind of went full on, uh, left the job and just gave it everything to start a business. And I kind of dabbled with a few things over the space of three years. Uh, And up until about three years ago, I launched what eventually evolved into becoming uh, what was my primary income, but I sold it about four months ago and then stepped into the coaching world. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the business I sold not too long ago was the biggest project I have ever been a part of. And I had no intentions of ever taking it to the level that I did. It kind of just gradually evolved over time. And I got quite lucky with the area that it was in, that there was a huge demand for it. It just naturally grew. Um, and now I teach people what I learned about that. Uh, so what I've learned over the years, I now specialize in teaching other people. So what was this business? That you did? Um, it started off as this small community. So it was a small community of avid cryptocurrency traders. So there was originally me and four other people in a group chat. And at the time, I was part of a company, a multi-level marketing company that was involved with cryptocurrencies. Uh, and they basically gave you trade signals. They told you what to buy, when to buy, and when to sell it. But I realized after a short amount of time that they were manipulating the data. So they would tell you to buy at a certain price. And a couple of weeks later, they would change their data on the system. They basically had their statistical records. So it would show that they'd actually given better trade ideas than they actually had. And when I noticed this, I ended up on a call with the owner of the company. And his priority was to make sure I didn't tell other people rather than worrying about losing me. He was more concerned that I wouldn't go tell everybody. So I stepped away from that company pretty quickly, but I liked the idea of having the ability of finding a professional who could tell you what to buy, when to buy, and when to sell it. I love the idea. It's an incredible shortcut because anyone who trades effectively knows it can take a lot of time. Uh, There's a lot of learning to do. You're probably going to lose a lot of money in the process. So if you can get a shortcut where somebody can give you the specifics of of what to do, that's, that's a tremendous thing. So... Me and four of my friends decided to hire a professional trader and we paid $2,000 per month. So split between me and the other four, uh, we paid $400 per month each. And before long, there were a few other people that wanted to join the group. So we had 10 people in the group and then 20 people in the group. So we were getting quite a bit of money in this pot. So we decided to hire a second trader and a third trader. And by the time we got to the point where we had three traders, we were all splitting the costs evenly. And we simply had to copy and paste these trades onto our own exchanges. I then decided I will make this easier for everybody. And I will create a product where I pay for all of the traders. And I charge people simply just $97 per month. And all of these trade ideas will go into one place on one channel. And everybody everybody can copy and paste them when they're awake, when they're not working. And gradually over time, 75% of the money that came into this pot went back into hiring more traders and 25% came to me. But there was a huge demand for automation simply because no matter where you were in the world, everyone felt like they were missing the best trades. So even if you're in the US or Australia or the UK, whatever trades happened while you were sleeping or working or eating, everyone was disappointed they missed those trades because they quite often were profitable ones. 
So there was a huge demand to be able to automate this process because at the time it was manual. You had to go in, you had to copy and paste the, the actual numbers onto your own exchange. So I hired a developer to put together some very basic automation, which worked quite well. And then we got quite a few more clients. And then gradually over time, I just put more and more money into building the automation behind it. To cut the story a little bit shorter, eventually evolved into a software development company that specialized in creating technology that revolves around cryptocurrency trading. So I had a team that developed the software for cryptocurrency exchanges, for trading automation, for trading bots, algorithms, lots of things like that. Um, it kind of just step by step naturally went down that path. So I was fortunate enough to step into an industry that is growing incredibly fast, especially right now. There's a huge demand for it, and I think there will be over many years to come. So that helped tremendously. Uh, but to have the mindset to notice there was a potential product there, and I built that up to just short of a thousand clients, and we traded uh, over two hundred million dollars over the space of three years, and I made tens of millions of dollars for my clients. So, so we did quite well. Um, awesome. It was a whole lot of fun. And now you've switched back to what you really wanted to do. So yeah, so I realized over time that. People that I meet, friends and family, and some other clients that I had for another side hustle, I was naturally just giving them pieces of advice, things that I had learned over time, and it was helping them tremendously. There were some people that I'd, I'd just give tips to, and they'd go out and use that and make quite a bit of money. And for some reason, anytime somebody asks me, John, right, give me, give me your opinion on this particular business path, and it's like my brain steps into another level, I step into another gear. And that's what I want to talk about. And that's what I want to do. And it took me a long time to realize this. So the coaching stuff kind of comes naturally. And I do it in my own way, in my own style. It works for me and works for the people around me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. I just find so much more extra energy and enthusiasm towards it. And it's never got to a point where it's become boring. You know, even if you have a passion, if you do it every single day, it can eventually become a bit of a chore. Mm -hmm. When it comes to coaching, it's not because I work with so many different clients and they all have their own businesses. They all have their own struggles. They all have their own goals. It's like I'm starting a new business every single time. And that's what's exciting for me. And of course, it pays the bills reasonably well. So that's a good incentive. Awesome. So when you talked about, you know, kind of getting away from your nine to five and into the business world, can you spend some time talking about that transition and how was it? Obviously, you know, it's it's not a smooth transition, right? You don't wake up one day and say, okay, I'm going to start a business and it starts running itself. It was, I'm going to go with quite traumatic. I'm going to go with, uh, through my near four, 34 years of being alive, the year when I transitioned into a business, this is probably not what people want to hear at this point, uh, was probably the most traumatic year of my life. But that's not just because of the transition from a nine to five to a business. It's because there are lots of things going on in my life at the time. I kind of hit a, a mental issue where I fell into this deep pit of despair and depression and self-resentment and hatred and just this, this ultimate feeling of failure because I'd left the job. I was struggling financially. I wanted to start a business and I wasn't sure which direction to go. My relationship for a mess. I was failing to provide for my my newborn child. I just ultimately felt lost. So it was a bad timing. It was traumatic. And I wouldn't ever encourage someone to go as deep as I did. I wouldn't encourage them to just stop their business and lose that financial security. Some people do that. That's entirely right. up to them. I, this is why the side hustle thing came into play. It's because I want to encourage people to build something alongside their primary income. So they have that additional security and they can gradually build it up over time until it allows them the freedom to either reduce their hours at work or leave completely. And some people are blessed enough to have a nine to five that they love. That's fantastic. I never had that. But at least with the side hustle, you can build it up over time. And if you do want to drop your hours, you can do that. Um, but the transition for me was was painful. Uh, unpleasant and everything I do now is to kind of avoid me going back to that situation and to help others that are either in that spot get out or to prevent them from making the same mistake. For my children in the future, I will advise them and encourage them to build something alongside their primary income, never, never to scrap their primary income completely and then learn how to build a business because it can take a while and it can be a struggle. 
And when you have the mental distractions of having to provide for a family and pay the bills, you know, if there's lots of things going on, it doesn't give you the mental freedom to be able to invest in your business effectively. So what, what kind of programs do you run under the Paragon Hustle umbrella? Um, so I do one-on-one coaching, group coaching, uh, and modular coaching. So there are the various combinations, but ultimately the vast majority of my clients have a combination of all three, simply because each one on its own has pros and cons. Um, with the modular coaching, for example, there are lots of uh, coaching options out there where you can go and pay, let's say, $497, $497, and you get access to a training course. But that course is not specific to you and your business and the way you work and your mind operates. It's just a general broad guidance and ultimately doesn't work very well. With group coaching, you can get a tremendous amount of value, but again, you don't get that one-on-one time from your coach. You might have a hundred people on a call and you don't get the opportunity to demand the time and focus from your particular coach or mentor because he or she is too busy helping so many people at once. So it's a lot better than modular coaching, but again, he's not quite on the level of one-to-one. And the downside to one-to-one only is that it can cost a tremendous amount of money simply because it's hard for the coach to scale their business. The only way to scale is to charge more, significantly more money uh, to cover their time. So it's very tricky. Um, so I do a combination of all three. Okay. All right. And then how has uh, 2020 been for you? Um, apart from the, the, the usual drama that's going on in the entire world that everyone, I think, is going through the same stuff. Uh, 2020 started off incredibly well. I had my my latest child, so number three, and awesome. she turned one yesterday. So on the 7th of January 2020, we got off to a great start. My uh, my little girl was born. So a great start. My little boy turned five in February, so everything's looking good. And I think COVID kind of had a slow negative impact. My focus always has been not to allow it to have as much of an impact on my life as... Right. Some people may allow. I try to carry on with my day-to-day the best I can, while obviously still respecting the boundaries and regulations and laws that are in place. Um, but, I, you know, I still want to continue with my life. I think there are opportunities, more opportunities out there now because there are a lot more people working from home, which gives them somewhat, some extra freedom and flexibility to now start to build a side hustle, which I think kind of helped tremendously because of the timing of this. Me starting my business during uh, during a pandemic, a lot of people have come to me saying, John, right, I've realized now my job's not as secure as I once thought it was. Um, now would be a good time for me to start to build a side hustle and be able to provide for my family a little bit better. So 2020 has certainly been a year of growth and learning uh, and lots of experience gained. You know, a lot of people are overwhelmed when they think about side hustles, Right. A lot of people yep. have have uh, an issue just trying to figure out what should they start. And then even if they are over that, then they have the issue between how do I get all this uh, technology and infrastructure in order to be a digital player set up? Um, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of people go through those challenges. What's your piece of advice for them? So I found the biggest issue is people trying to figure out what their side hustle, their side hustle should be. And most people have actually thought of ideas or they have tried ideas in the past and they've never really come to fruition, which has kind of put a little bit of a disheartening feeling, which discourages them from trying again. Mm -hmm. My biggest tip really is to just start whatever it is you want to do. Just start it. Don't worry about it being perfect. No business is perfect. It will take, in fact, for the rest of your business career, you will always be refining and improving and growing and learning. For you to expect to start a business that is 100% perfect from the get go is unrealistic and will only lead to disappointment. Mm-hmm. I teach my clients. So, one of the courses I do specializes in helping people discover what their business idea should be. Then we work on putting together a solution, one 
specific solution or a menu of solutions. And then we work on figuring out who your perfect client is, where they are, who they are, what it is they want, what keeps them awake at night, lots of different things like that. So you understand what your business should be, what your specific solution will be and who wants it. So your conversion rates are tremendous because a lot of people struggle with burnout. They may come up with a business idea and they spend all day hustling, trying to get people to buy whatever it is they they offer and they're just not speaking to the right people. And it kind of becomes tedious and it just becomes another typical nine to five, but you're working from home. If you can figure out who your specific client should be, the best person for you to work with, your conversion rates will be so much higher and the business becomes so much easier. But one tip I have on figuring out uh, what your business idea should be is I take my clients through a procedure where we write down quickly uh, 10 of your hobbies, 10 things that you like to do or 10 things that you've done in the past that you probably don't do anymore. So maybe it's playing football, playing rugby. Maybe you used to play squash or badminton or golf or mini golf. You know, it can be a, a hobby, an activity. It could be walking. Once you write those 10 things down, we then write 10 things you are good at So for me, you know, it can be uh, just quickly off the top of my head. I'm going to go with coaching. I'm going to go with automating businesses. I'm going to go with problem solving, parenting, uh, reasonably good at basketball. I do a little bit of walking, a little bit of running. Uh, I do some go-kart racing. I'm reasonably good at. So that's eight there in the space of 10 seconds. So we figure out what you're good at. And then from those 10, sorry, we figure out 10 that you're good at. And from those 10, we write down the three that you are the best at. Um, So for me, would have to be coaching of some kind, problem solving, and I think parenting has to go in there somewhere, maybe racing a close close fourth. Uh, But those three. So I would be naturally inclined to find a business that revolves around one of these three somewhere or ideally covers one or two of them. But most people think that any particular thing that they do, a hobby or something they are good at, is not valuable to the world. But ultimately, that's nonsense. There are people out there now who are queuing up, willing to throw money at you to learn what you know. Every single person on this planet has something they can offer the world that people want to buy right now. And I'll give you an example. So back when I was about 13 or 14 years old, I remember at school, we were in a PE lesson. And one of the older boys was in our changing rooms and he was spinning a basketball on his finger. And it looked like the easiest thing in the world. And I couldn't comprehend the the ability to do that. And everyone thought it was amazing. It looked so cool. He could just spin a basketball on his finger and just hold it there for ages. And I thought it was amazing. So we had our summer holidays shortly afterwards, and I spent six weeks learning how to do this. And when I went back to school, I spun the ball on my finger, and I showed some of my friends, and they thought it was cool, uh, but not that amazing. But still to this day, I can do this. And one of my coaches teaches, it's the first language versus the third language uh, principle. So for me now, spinning a ball on my finger is my first language, but there are people out there that would pay to learn how to do this quickly and effectively so they don't waste lots of time. So if there were people who come up to me and say, John, if you can teach me how to spin a ball on my finger, I will give you $50. There will be tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people that want to do this now. And if you go on YouTube now, I've searched for this before. I use this as an example in one of my trainings. If you go on YouTube now and search for how to spin a basketball on my finger, how to spin a ball on my finger. The first result that comes up that was posted a year ago has had 750,000 views. And there are hundreds of other videos that have hundreds of thousands of views. There's probably tens of millions in total. Now, if you had a very simple offer where you do, I don't know, it's a two minute video showing people how to spin a basketball on the finger. And then you've put together a 10 minute video in greater detail. And only 1% of the people that watch your video bought it he would have had seven and a half thousand people buy that course. So if it's at $10, it would have made $75,000 for creating one video, well, two videos, I guess. And that's from something that I would consider, you know, it's it's my first language. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants to learn. I can't build a business around spinning a ball on my finger, but you seriously can. It can be anything. You can, I don't know, just looking around me now, you can sell microphones, you can sell jigsaws, you can sell lighting, you can sell, uh, you can, make affiliate commissions on on cameras, on computers. Um, You can create the canvas pictures that are behind me. You can get a really cheap setup to create canvas pictures. People send you their pictures, you print it on the canvas and you post it to them. And with something like that, you're probably making 100%, 200% markup on it. There's almost no limit to what you can do. 
But if you can come up with a business idea that revolves around something you have an interest in or a passion for, it makes it so much easier to grow with that business because there will be days where you struggle. There'll be days where things happen and it kind of ruins the fun. It takes away the fun. It takes away the energy. But if it's something you already have a passion for, it's easier to overcome that and keep growing and keep progressing. Makes sense. And then what about what about the tactical aspects of once they have zeroed in on what they want to do, do you also help them with some of the other aspects, you know, what technologies to use, how to connect them and all that? Yeah, so for the most part, most businesses don't need much with regard to technology. They need the fundamentals of, of business, which are the same fundamentals that every single b- successful business has used for however many hundreds of years. There are lots of fancy apps and and. Uh, technical things that you can use that may create some shortcuts but ultimately you just need to get the fundamentals mastered i teach that too and then we go on to the more advanced stuff and we learn to automate some of the the processes which then frees up more time and energy for you to focus on the parts of the business that generate the most revenue and again this is because a lot of people spend a lot of time in their business working on activities that don't generate revenue, you know, working on customer service, tweaking their logo, tweaking their website, putting together emails, whatever it may be, things that don't directly generate an income. Yeah. And you are running a business. Your priority should be to make a profit. If you're not making a profit, it's not a business. Um, So I teach that stuff too. But once you know what you want your business to be, the next thing you need to figure out is you need to figure out specifically what your solution is. And usually you are solving somebody's problem. If you know what problem you are solving and you can create a solution specifically for that, you'll make a lot more money than a general uh, a general solution. And I'll give you the example of, I don't know what the costs are, but I know in the US to go see a general practitioner, let's say it costs $50 to go see a GP. We are fortunate in the UK that we don't actually have to pay for the NHS, which is pretty cool. But I know in the US, you go pay a general pr- practitioner, let's say $50. If you want to go see a bone doctor, you're paying $1,500. And that's because the general practitioner is just a general doctor, whereas the bone doctor specializes in a very niche area. So if you can create a business that specializes in a very niche area and you can find the people that want you to solve their very specific problem, they will naturally expect to pay you significantly more than if you were to solve a broad general uh, problem. Makes sense. Now, what's, uh, what, What's your plans for 2021? Uh, learn lots, grow a lot, stop having more children, uh, <laughs> and hopefully get outside at some point. That would be nice. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, business-wise, I'm so I had quite a few clients join me in January. Um, obviously, new year, new me. There's a lot happening in the world, and I did put together an offer for people to join me in January. So it's a very busy month. February should slow down a little bit, uh, somewhat, but at the moment I'm putting together uh, more content for my modules and eventually I do have the plans to scale to another level. One thing that I teach in my training as well is something that I'm about to implement and that's basically collaborating with other coaches of sorts and bringing them into my community. So I have one client on a Monday that teaches, let's say, mindset and motivation I have another coach who will join me on a Tuesday and they will teach, uh, let's say, marketing. Uh, Another coach who will join and teach Facebook marketing or Facebook ads or something on a Wednesday. Uh, And then we'll have business fundamentals on a Thursday and so on. So basically, I'll have a group of five coaches that work with me each week and we can offer lots of different areas. And these will be specialists in their own area. So people who are part of my community will have access to tremendous amounts of value And then gradually I can scale that over time and I'll have more coaches taking over some of the work that I do. So I get to do less. And for the people that want to reach you, where do they go find you? So I'm quite easy to find on social media. There are not too many John Paragons about, funnily enough. Uh, So you can find me on Facebook if you look look for John Paragon. My profile is public and on LinkedIn too. Um, And if you want to check out my website, I do have an offer at the moment, which is paragon30.com. And the ultimate goal is to take you from wherever you are now to profit in 30 days. And we do that by either discovering your ideal business, or if you already have one, we then go on to the next step. We then put together a solution, a solution that's specific to someone's very specific problem. 
Then we figure out your ideal client avatar so we can get tremendous conversion rates. And so you're not wasting your time marketing to everybody who doesn't want your product. So there's a few steps to it, but the best place to find it is at paragon30.com. So it's paragon30. Awesome. And for the listeners, before I let you go, any takeaway that you'd like to share? I think I've shared lots. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. You may have noticed I go off on a, a little bit of a tangent from time to time. This is a, this is why I do uh, the business coaching stuff, just because I get a little bit excited and I start talking and it's very tricky for me to stop and rein it in. I think people who spend an hour with me, I think they take away lots. I do. So if you check out paragon30.com, if you are not sure where you are with regards to a business or you already have one and you want some free con uh, consulting, if you follow the steps on the website, it will take you through to book a free 15 minute call with me. And I'm more than happy to jump on a call. You may find it goes over 15 minutes. It probably will just because I get a little bit excited. But I'm more than happy to share wherever you are at in the business. I will share my expertise and help you get to the next level. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, John. It's been a pleasure talking to you, learning about you, your business. And I'm sure the listeners will definitely check out uh, what you have to offer. And uh, you should be hearing from us soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.